All right, so it's time to start pumping up. So that means we need a sodium spike. We got a quarter of a teaspoon of sodium. That's one. That's two. That's three. Give me one more, baby. That's right, salt, baby. If you're a salt lover like I am, hey, let's get this party started right. Let's get this thing off on the right foot. Toss me a salt comment in the comments below this video. Hey, Jim Schultz here for F-Cubed and LiveFCubed.com. Man, just dropping truth bombs all over the place on you guys. Training, nutrition, even some finance, even some faith. So if you guys are brand new to the channel, if you would consider subscribing, that would mean so much to me. And hey, man, make sure you guys strap in until the end, because I've got a special little something just for you guys. And hey, let me also say this before we get started, before we get rolling and get knee deep in the hoopla here today. If you're sedentary, if you're not active, then all bets are off. But to my fitness enthusiasts, I'm talking to you guys. Today, we're going to talk sodium and bodybuilding. Whether that be recreational bodybuilding or competitive bodybuilding, I'm talking to you athletes out there that take your training seriously. So as an athlete, how much sodium should we be taking? Should we be following the RDA, the recommended daily allowance of like, you know, 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams? Is that what we should be doing? Is that how we should be fueling our bodies? I mean, you hear so many competing theories, man. I mean, high sodium intake, high salt intake, low sodium intake, low salt intake. So what should we be doing? Well, as you guys saw there in the opening little clip, as a competitive bodybuilder, I've had to use sodium in very strategic ways. And so over the years, I've developed a very, very firm grasp on sodium and water balance and sodium and performance. So I want to share my thoughts with you guys here today. So here's the first thing that we want to remember. As athletes, your muscles, your central nervous system, they need sodium to contract, they need sodium to operate. And so it stands to reason that if you're an athlete that's placing very high demands on your muscles, that's placing very high demands on that central nervous system, it stands to reason that you likely need more sodium than the average person. More sodium than someone who might be more sedentary. Now, the actual hormone inside of your body that controls this entire process is called aldosterone. Now, you might be wondering, Jim, what is aldosterone? Well, stay tuned because we're going to have a video specifically designed in explaining or specifically designed to explain that hormone. But the other thing I want to say here that I think is kind of important is you may be thinking, Jim, here's what I want to know. How much sodium per day to lose weight? How much sodium per day to lose fat? I'll say this, let's not forget that your time in the gym needs to be spent building muscle. Your time at the grocery store needs to be spent burning fat. So when it comes to our performance, when it comes to being in the gym, sodium is very important for that performance. And so we need to position ourselves to perform at the highest level possible. In other words, we don't want to have such a reduced sodium intake. We don't want to take our sodium levels down so low that it adversely impacts our performance. We need to make sure that we can perform at a very high level. Remember, we are athletes. And when we go through that aldosterone video, you guys are going to see that if you do take your sodium levels down really low, it's very likely not going to have the effect or the impact on your body or your fat loss that you thought it might. So you might be thinking, Jim, all right, dude, straight up, man, like, how much sodium should I be taking in? Well, I'll give you two answers. I'll give you a general answer, and I'll give you a specific answer from my own experience. From a general standpoint, don't be afraid to salt your food, man. Don't be afraid to add a little salt to your food so it tastes better. If you're training at a very high level, right, and you're, like, tracking your macros, you got protein, you got carbs, you got fat, you got fiber, you got all this stuff right, then you're going to be absolutely fine salting your foods because 
about 70% of the sodium that we take in in a typical American diet is from processed foods. So if you're like, you know, if you're tracking your macros and you're trying to hit your fiber goal, fiber goals specifically, you're not going to be eating too much processed food. I mean, nine out of 10 times, your meals are going to be very, very healthy in nature. So adding a little salt to those is not going to be a problem at all. It'll make sure that you are fueled up from a sodium standpoint for your training sessions. Now, some of you guys out there, you want to get a little bit more granular. Well, here you go. Last summer, I was getting ready for those two bodybuilding shows. And a couple weeks before that first show, I was tracking my sodium, getting ready for peak week. And I was taking in about 4,500 milligrams per day. Now, my training demands at this point in the cycle were astronomically high. So 4,500 milligrams a day. And it turns out that I became severely sodium depleted. Now, this was a self-diagnosis on my part. But here's how I kind of figured out that it was sodium depletion kind of after the fact because I felt like absolute garbage, man. I just felt like trash. And I said, hey, I think I'm low on sodium. And Autumn looked at me, she said, hey, I think you're low on sodium. I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna eat a whole bunch of pickles. So I went to work that day, I opened up the jar of pickles, and I just started throwing back these spears, man. Just left, just right. Within about an hour, I felt so much better. So there you go, man. There's a little something to be said about sodium intakes. Now, whatever your sodium intakes are, I mean, obviously, you know, listen to your doctor. Obviously, don't, you know, take my advice. Don't take a random guy on the internet's advice over whatever your doctor or your medical care professional is telling you. But don't fall victim to all the hype in the media that says that sodium is the enemy, that sodium is the devil. If you guys want more information, more good, clear, and accurate information, then I would look up guys that study this stuff all the time like Lane Norton, like Eric Helms, like Alan Aragon. Like these guys are just knee deep in this research, doing the research themselves, that they know this space really, really well. Low sodium, high sodium, sodium depletion, sodium overload. Everything in gym, I don't care about any of that, man. I need to get motivated. Well, if that's the case, then I got something for you. You need to download the mystery behind motivation right now. This is a link down in the description below this video to a little ebook that I put together a couple of years ago. And this thing is designed to do one thing, to get you fired up for life. All right, guys, there you go, man. Hit that like button if you liked what I had to say. You hit that dislike button if you didn't like what I had to say. Either way, you share it with a friend. You share it with a friend who will also hit the like button. You share it with a friend who will also hit that dislike button. And either way, both of you guys, all four of you guys, subscribe now. Don't be afraid to salt your food. Don't be afraid to add a little salt to your food, basically to however you like it, basically to however your taste buds, 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 taste buds. I don't know why I was saying buds, but that's pretty fun.